Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 90 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. That's right, we are 10 episodes away from episode 100. We are zero episodes away from a Let's Play download of the map. Uh, so, let's take a quick look at what's going on, and then we're going to talk about what's going to be going on for this episode. Uh, last episode we wrapped up by making a bunch of bees. So you can see uh, our bees have been happily humming along, doing the things that bees do, making us some honeycombs. Uh, we don't have anything terribly interesting just yet to show off, but don't worry, we're gonna get that pretty darn soon. However, I've come up with something that I think is really cool, and I'm really excited to show you guys. Uh, I have plans for a nifty building that's gonna actually be a two-parter build. Uh, now, I did wanna continue with the bee breeding and processing and figuring all the stuff out, but I also have this really neat idea for a building that I have no idea how I'm gonna do because like, you know, I'm really not that great at building stuff, but I'm gonna try and see what happens. Um, I might wind up doing a little bit of work off camera uh, between this episode and next to kinda, or well, no, not between this episode and next, between now and the middle of the episode. I don't know, you know what I mean. I'll be doing some work off camera, hopefully. Um, getting some stuff exactly mapped out the way I want it. Uh, I better have an axe on me because I will definitely be uh, chopping some stuff pretty soon here because I'm using wood for some of the patterns here. So basically I have two plans for this building. Plan one will be the place where the bees themselves live. So that'll be the uh, bee apiary room, which will hopefully be like nice, flowery, kind of like nature-ish feel to it. And then adjacent to that room will be a separate room that'll be a laboratory and will be where all the genetic processing and laboratory style work is going to happen. So one room nice, the other room technical and laboratory-ish. That's kind of the plan for my bee room and I hope it comes out as good as it looks in my mind because in my mind I have a rough idea but I'm also you know me so we'll see what happens so I'm gonna have just a pretty small room nothing too large uh, for the uh, industrial for the for the apiary we're gonna build this one first um, I, I guess a nine by nine would probably work one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve let's just do a, an eleven by eleven does that sound cool so we'll do uh, ten this way one two three four five six seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. Let me get out my tape measure too. That's probably not a bad idea. It might be in the AE system or it might be in here and I just didn't see it or I might not know where it is. Is it up here? I have no idea where my tape measure is. Well, that's what happens when you're me sometimes. Luckily, pretty easy to get another tape measure going. And then I'll find it and be like, oh, I'm such a derp, there it was. So let me build out the, the rough layout of this place and then we'll come back and hopefully have a good plan for a nice little building. So like I said, one area for the bees to live in, one for doing all the laboratory stuff. All right, guys, I'm thinking something kind of like this. Does this look halfway decent-ish? Uh, let's shrink this down to here. Not bad for a little apiary B room. You know what? I decided I wanted it to be one set of blocks taller. So luckily, that's easy to do. Not terrible? Yeah, I think that looks halfway decent. Now what should the roof look like? You know what? I'm not going to have a roof. Yeah. You don't need house. You don't need roofs on apiaries. That's something I just decided. Uh, so let's go ahead and move these guys over here. Uh, we'll probably want to bring our Tesseract with us. So let me put my stuff away. And uh, yeah, let's get our wrench ready for this. We will bring our Tesseract along with us. And we should probably bring the flowers and the bee producing stuff. Woot. Um, clearly lots of junk in my inventory. We'll sort this out in a minute. Come here, you, all this junk. So what I'm thinking we could do, um, and hopefully this maps out the way I have it in my head. Where's the industrial apiaries? There they are. So if we did like one, two, three, four, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe one further back though. Um, let's drop all this stuff here, including you. All right, I'll figure it out. Um, I'm thinking one more further back. I want this to kind of be as good as it can be. 
Come here, give me my industrial apiaries back. There they are. So one, two, three, and we'll get this back into here, and then one, two, yeah, that'll be cool, right? So those can be our apiaries, if we need that many. But we'll have room for growth, right? That'll be nice looking. Um, and then let's get our bees going. So we've got commons and commons going in there. And because you're commons, you're definitely going to need this. And we had the shortened lifespan in there. Yeah, because commons have a pretty long lifespan, as I recall. And then here, we'll put the, we'll put the water drones here. This is the cultivated bee. That's cool. You're going to want that, and you're going to want that. And then we had some lifespans here. Order, cultivated drones, nice. Oh yeah, you're powerless. <laughs> That's what happens when you're rebuilding stuff. My bad. Um, you guys can actually get, oh, you have automation upgrade, right? Yeah, we want all three of these guys to have the automation upgrade. That is correct, cool. And then all we need is this, and let's get from our AE system a water bucket. No, I'm trying to decide how I want this to work, but you know, I think we could just do that, right? Sweet. And then of course, flowers for the other ones. Awesome. So this place will eventually fill up with lots of flowers, but that'll be cool. So I kind of feel like just so that I have it, like, working well, I should have another industrial apiary just so it looks good, but eh. And then, of course, they need power, right? So if we look in here, oh, yeah, they're all out of power, so they're not going to work. Let's get that going. That'll be underground because we want this to look nice, right? So let's build something of an underground area here that's, uh, I'll jump into Ender Mini form, I think. So I should probably just start at the center of this room. And we should grab our hammer too. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, so this looks like a nice little underground area that should work uh, to keep our beehives running beautifully. Uh, so all we have to do is burrow up into them. Nice. Also nice. That will get a energy pipe there, so that won't be so much of a problem. Using a little, just a little strip there to help keep that thing going. So again, all nice and well hidden and looking fancy. I'm rather proud of that. And I mean, we can just have our, we can really just have our Tesseract anywhere. I'll actually probably just throw it in the back corner here so that it's really not in the way of anybody. Nice. So you should all be charging up now. The bees are able to run again and everything's looking good. Cool. So we have that underground area we can just jump into as we need to do more work underneath. Um, we're probably going to want to do stuff as it relates to uh, piping items in and out of here. So we might actually wind up swapping those to some item flux duct things, but we'll see. All right, guys, I kind of changed my plans for what I want to do. So under here will be where I've got my power system for my bees and everything. But leading back here, I think, is where I want my laboratory to be. And this will be like the genetics laboratory. So let's find some cool blocks to use for a genetics laboratory. What do you say? So currently I'm debating between the three types of uh, laboratory type look for the walls. Kind of leaning towards that fuzzy panel. I don't know why. I just kind of like the look of it. I don't like the wall separations there. That's just a little bit blank and boring to me. So let's do that. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to need a few more of those. Uh, chisel, where'd you go? That was the fuzzy panel. Nice. Since I'm a little bit low on these, I don't really need them going and doing what they're doing. That looks good. And then uh, just a few more fuzzy panels here. Cool. Um, I'm thinking along the roof here, maybe we could have... There's something that looks neat. These guys. Oh, actually, I have a whole other stack of them, so that's nice. There 
And then maybe... You guys tell me how this looks. I don't know. I'm trying. I really am. If I know Aurora she'll tell me. She'll be like, hey, Dyer. You didn't do bad. But let me tell you what you did wrong. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, she'll probably be proud of me. At least for trying. Not terrible looking? Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, let me just figure out the ceiling then, and we'll figure out where we're at from there. All right, guys, so next and final step for this fancy build that I'm trying to do is, uh, first, I'd like to have a travel anchor in this room. We'll see if this is a decent enough spot. Uh, I could have probably painted this guy, but eh, for now, we'll just call it um, B-Lab. Kind of like C-Lab. Sweet. Awesome. Of course, I can get there by travel anchor here. Beautiful. And then let's put a door here. Um, I'm debating how I want the door to look. Um, let's see. When this gets placed here, that looks like that. And I believe I can do something like this. And then where's my carpenter's hammer? Carpenter's hammer... See, that doesn't look terrible. Hmm. Wish they would uh, connected textures. This is the one that connected textures itself, right? Well, kind of, but sort of. Yeah, I don't think it'll connect a texture. Kind of cool looking, different options there. But I think that looks good. And I should be able to pressure plate that. Yeah, not too shabby. I like it. So check this out. I'm going to paint some dark pressure plates in the painting machine with quite clear glass, and that should make them invisible. Let's pop down to our B-Lab. Oh, that's cool. Nice, look at that, totally invisible. Nice. What do you guys think? Not not terrible? I kind of like it. Um, yeah. I should probably make the interior here the lab texture, though. Um, yeah. And now for my final step. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. Not bad. Nice. So now I shouldn't need to use uh, holes in the floor anymore, and that should look good. All right, so now that we've uh, established the look and feel, which I hope you guys enjoyed, um, as always, comments, because you know, like, it's not really my forte, if you will, uh, but I tried for you. Uh, let's go ahead and start implementing things in that lab, because there's definitely some stuff I'm going to want to do pretty much right now. Uh, so what do you got in there? bunch of mutagens. Let's get that Eulorium out of there. Let's get ourselves a tank. Let's get ourselves a better tank than that. I'm thinking a hardened one should do. Do we want to do a reinforced? Sure, why not? Couldn't hurt to have a bunch of that stuff, right? A bunch of mutagen laying around, should be fine. Uh, while we're there, let's go ahead and fill that up, hopefully. Can you fill up? Nice, that's what I wanted to see. All right, cool. So then you, with me, with me, and the advanced mutatron, eh, you might wind up losing what's in your buffer, or you might not, I don't know, we'll find out. I'll live. And then all this stuff comes with me too. Interesting. Cool. A couple things that aren't fitting, so let's just throw some stuff away. Then I'm going to figure out where this is all going to be mapped out, so we'll be back in a minute once I figure out the plan for what I'm going to do with all this stuff. 
All right, guys, so uh, I cleared out a little bit of an underground area here to work with. Uh, we'll probably, again, throw a test rack in the corner somewhere, like here, main power out, frequency two, receiving energy, and we will run some piping around, specifically with the purpose of powering up these machines. Uh, what I'm also thinking of, it would be cool to have a bunch of liquids here, so I'm eventually I'm thinking going to have a couple tanks. Uh, maybe I should get them ready in a minute here, but at the very least, let's put our eulorium away. There you go. You start producing your mutagen again. Uh, I'm guessing that you auto output here, so let's do that. But before we completely do that, let's do this. I'm going to take a structured duct. Nice. Oh, broken connected texture. Fail. Oh well, that's okay. Uh, you know what, these are probably all gonna be eventually these guys anyway. So let's just do, oh cool, nice. Connected texture fix, awesome. Look at that, and it's starting to fill up with more of the mutagen, cool. I'm thinking we'll eventually have um, some other mutagen stuff going on in here too, but we will uh, talk about that shortly. But at least for now, uh, that's cool. And then we'll want the mutagen to flow. Um, so unfortunately, we're gonna have to reroute you just a little bit because we are going to want this mutagen to flow through here somehow. So we'll have to figure this out. Let's see. You are also going to go into a structure for sure. Cool, advanced mutatron, requires mutagen. That's gonna get piped directly into there somehow. Let's jump into bat mode for this one. We'll probably do this behind the walls. This should work and actually, I kind of want it, believe it or not, showing. So I'm gonna block that. <laughs> I actually wanna show it piping in through the, the, the system there. So I think that would be cool looking. And what we should probably do with this is, you guessed it, another one of these structure pipe things for the floor type. Cool. So then we can pick this up. We'll put the floor type structure down and that should work. We might need a servo on that, but that should be fine. We can manage. Won't need you then. We will need more um, of the hardened flux ducts. Let's get some more of them. So let's kick it on and see if this works. Boom, kicks into there. This fluid should show up here, I would think. Laboratory block cover. Why oh, you no know, connect? There it goes, got it. Uh, so there we go, mutagen pumping into there. Awesome looking, right? Not too bad. And then our lab work can move back in. Um, as for the AE system, I'm thinking maybe along this wall. So what I'm thinking is um, mutagen producer here, the, the three types of um, tanks here. So that'll be a tank, that'll be a tank, and then we'll have a couple other uh, machines. So I'm gonna try something and we're gonna see if it works. Uh, but what I'm thinking is maybe put glass cable there with this thing here. Not too shabby, right? All right, I can handle that. Um, and then that should be right up here. Sweet. Um, we will want to grab ourselves some more cables. And probably a few more of these facades because we're gonna have to hide the mess that I just made. There we go. Awesome. So you should have access now. Beautiful. Like what I see. Uh, let's also get our facade for this guy. So it will be you as a AE2 facade. Oh, connect the texture fail. Yet again. That's okay. We can uh, instead just do something like this.
this is how we did it before we had covers. Kids these days with their covers and their fancy stuff that connected textures. Looking sharp. All right, there's two machines I wanna get that are new for you guys. The genetic sampler and the genetic imprinter. Uh, now these two machines are gonna be pretty important. We're gonna need another one of these. So while we're at it, let's get a few. So we have just some handy. And there we go. Uh, we're also going to wanna to teach the thing here how to make another type of blank something. It is a blank gene sample, okay? Uh, so we will encode this pattern. Notice it uses quite a lot of tin for this and a bit of redstone. So how are we for tin? Just out of curiosity. Uh, we've got 4,137, we should be okay. So we're gonna wanna make sure this thing knows how to make this stuff. And uh, we might want to make one more thing. Um, I'm thinking we'll wanna make this guy. Um, templates. Genetic template. Yeah, maybe we want to teach the AE system how to make a genetic template. And we'll save that for a little bit later. Cool. So while we're at it, let's get our gene samplers. Let's get about 40 of them. Missing redstone? Are you kidding me? There's no way I'm running low on redstone. I'm running low on redstone. All right, awesome. Another thing I'm going to need somebody else like bees to make for me. Go, cycle, run. Get me redstone. Okay, we're back. Uh, I should have enough redstone to at least get like 22 of these. Sure, why not? Kick that off, boom. You guys are making the gene samples for me, thank you. Uh, so we're gonna put our imprinter and our sampler right maybe here, I think. We might have a couple more things to put there, but we shall see. Oh, also in the meantime, I can probably run my redstone stuff again. We might rearrange this a little bit as I figure out exactly which machines I need, but at least for now, this should do. And maybe we'll even get a teleporter or elevator thing in here. So the gene and printer and the gene sampler, I actually reversed these on how I wanted them. I want the sampler on the left for no particular reason other than I'm weird. So sampler and imprinter. So the sampler, uh, we put labware in. So yes, we're gonna need more labware, please. Uh, let's ask for 100. Missing glass panes. You don't know how to make glass panes. You are a noob, direwolf. I'll teach the system how to do that in a bit. Um, we're also gonna think need genetic labware and the imprinter as well. You guys are getting power, you're good. Uh, so what we do is we place blank gene samples in here, and then we go get a B, one that we want to copy. So let's say the common drone. Bees have a bunch of traits, and if I was any kind of a mod user, I would have shown you all those traits that bees have. But let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's see what happens. So we're gonna get uh, this thing right here called the gene sample, nice. Take him over B. We just learned the gene trait tolerant flyer. Now, if we let this thing run again, it'll probably get stuck until we take this gene sample out and we'll get another one here called ignores day and night, false. All right, guys, I quickly made a carpenter for you guys to see exactly uh, what's involved in bees and genetics. So we're gonna want to have uh, this thing anyway. And I decided that this room is gonna be some of the processing that some of my bee stuff is gonna do. So we'll process stuff in here and this will be the genetics laboratory. Cool, maybe we'll make this room fancy too, but we'll see. Uh, for now, we need to put redstone in here, two of these guys in here, this here, and that there, cool. Carpenter is making a bealizer for me. I just need a little bit of power. Let's do for now, Cool. Nice. He's cruising and we'll get a bealizer from this which allows us to analyze our bees. But before we can do that, we're gonna need one more thing. So we're going to need centrifuges. Um, so maybe we wind up with this. Nope, that was supposed to be my wrench. 
So centrifuges are how we take things that bees have made for us, like honeycombs, and get useful items out of them. Um, I'm thinking at some point I will uh, get this thing automated, but at least for now. You know what? No, I'm going to automate it right now because I have a cool idea for how I want to automate it. All right, guys, you ready for this cool stuff? I've got a bunch of uh, fluctuating item ducks. So let's uh, remove you and you. I did not mean to remove you. That's the opposite of what I meant to do. That's all right, we can fix it. We can fix it. I don't think I can put these back, but that's okay. We'll fix it. Um, and then remove you, you, and I'm gonna need to remove you in a minute. Hopefully I made enough of these. Fluctuating item ducks. Ha, <laughs> the wrong place to put that too. All right. Luckily I can autograph water buckets, ha ha. There we go. So your job will be twofold fluctuating item ducks. Oh yeah, I'm sure just like three. Awesome. All right. Well, anyway, we will uh, make more of these and be right back. All right. So fluctuating item ducks can transfer both power and items. Nice. Went ahead and got myself some servos. Might want a few more of those, but we'll see. But I should be able to activate this guy and tell him... Now, in here will be a bunch of honeycombs, right? As uh, it should be the same here, a decent amount, and here. Cool, so one, two, and you're probably not doing anything. I never put bees in there, but eventually we'll have bees in there. Um, now I want to make sure, I'm not sure how this is going to work when the bee dies. So we're going to kind of want to keep an eye on that. Um, but what I think will happen, oh, I also have some lifespan guys here for you. I kind of want to see him die pretty quickly. Actually, yeah, perfect timing. Let's ignore redstone. You should pull out. Um, I just want to see when the bee dies, if the bee immediately goes in here or if she goes to the output slot temporarily. If she goes to the output slot, temporarily what's going to happen is it might get pulled out by the machine but we'll find out in a moment here so let's see working 90 percent you're happy no errors come on there we go okay cool right directly into cultivated princess territory that's awesome so that means um all we have to do then is hit this dude now the other thing i'm going to do is make him pull out like two at a time here we'll do the same for this guy and we'll say round robin and round robin so ignore and he should wind up pulling out a couple of these things at a time and they'll eventually work their way over to the centrifuges and kind of be a round robin type situation now typically you won't get too much uh going on here um but we'll set that guy to that and we'll do the same for this one just in preparation for when he's ready so ignored round robin boom now these guys should all be running and centrifuging and getting me honey drops and beeswax. Nice. My honey drops are what I can use to analyze my bees, which is kind of the reason I started building this thing. Uh, it's funny how I'm doing the advanced stuff first and the basic stuff second, but that's what happens sometimes. My bee elizer is ready, which means I can go ahead and drop my honey drops in here. And let's take that stack of bees over here that we were going to analyze. We'll just drop them right into the analyzer like so. Shift click or place them up here. You can find out all the information about your bees. So different bees have different traits 
and getting the best traits is kind of the name of the game with bee breeding. So you'll notice here that this bee has a pretty short lifespan, not terribly short, but shorter. Uh, he's a pretty slower production speed. He's the slowest for pollination. Um, he's for flower type is flowers, so he likes to have flowers nearby. The water one, for example, would say lily pad here. Fertility is how many drones he'll have when the queen dies. Um, and then effect, he can have a positive or negative effect on you. Uh, what type of climate he likes and whether he's tolerant of other temperatures um, and whether he runs during the day or night, whether or not he needs to see the sky and a bunch of other information that's kind of fun to pay attention to. But what we're looking to do is steal one of these traits. So every time we analyze a drone, we will see a gene sample getting made and going ahead and getting that gene sample and storing it right here. Cool. So we're going to let this guy continue to run. And we got from here, taken from B territory average, cave dwelling false. What I want is the species trait. That's what's important. So what I might do is to make this thing run a little bit better, go ahead and grab an import bus. And while I'm at it, I think I'll need some more cables. Import bus ready now? Nice. So I want all my gene samples to wind up in my AE system here. Uh, I guess we're going to need to do this in the back. Yeah, maybe not a bad idea to run this under the floor, maybe. We don't even need uh, any complicated AE2 stuff here, right? Just the basics. There we go. So it's okay, remember that's kind of like your underground wiring system. It doesn't need to be all covered in fancy looking. But you'll notice that now it's sucking in uh, the species, right? So we got the speed slower, and then it got imported into the system. Nice. Um, while we're here, let's go ahead and start centrifuging some of this cool stuff. Nice. And hopefully I'll get my common species at a moment here. Oh, species common. Nice. That's really what I was looking for. So I'm just going to take these drones out of here. We'll put them in the system for use for later. Now what I want to do is convert this rocky princess into a common drone. Uh, to do that, we're going to need a genetic template. We take one of these genetic templates, we craft it with a gene sample, boom. Notice that it used up that gene sample. But now we've got a genetic template that can be applied to the bee that applies the species common. Nice. Um, thinking what I might wanna do, I don't think it uses up the genetic template. So I'm gonna put my genetic template in here and I'm gonna put my Rocky Princess there and then it's gonna go ahead and process. Dun, 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 dun. Meanwhile, I'll put the empty guy back here. By the way, you can copy these genetic templates if you want in a different machine, which I haven't made yet. But what we should now have is another common bee princess. Nice, common princess, I like it. So let's take her upstairs. And we're going to get just one cultivated bee. And because this is my lab area, we're going to mutagen them into Noble Queen. Dun, 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 dun. Nice. This is going to be fun. Now I can bring the Noble Queen upstairs and get her cooking. Sweet. So we'll make her happy by uh, putting the planes upgrade in there. Uh, four lifespans. We should also get another automation upgrade. Let's make sure we have one of them. We just need a gear and a piston. Sweet. And having them teleport to the B lab is kind of nice. All right, automation upgrades. So now the Noble Queen will probably die pretty quickly. 
not too shabby, and uh, will also, you know, be automatic, just like the others. Uh, unfortunately, I do have bad news. It is time to wrap up the episode. So what I'm going to do here, uh, which I think is probably a good plan, is come back next episode, and hopefully that's the point at which we'll be able to get to our emerald-producing bees, um, as well as maybe a couple other useful bees, like maybe we want a redstone-producing bee because I just realized we were low on redstone. How are we now that my uh, thing has run for a little bit? Redstone... Eh, not so hot, to be honest with you. But that's okay, we'll figure it out. Uh, we will come up with some plans around getting some of the resources that we just struggle to have a lot of because we just use so much. Bees will definitely help with this. Um, so next episode, we'll breed a couple more bees, get ourselves everything that we want and need forever. And then we'll come back uh, and uh, get our emeralds, get those lasers going, and I have all kinds of other cool stuff to look into. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I know I was aiming to get the, uh, you know, I should probably have these things up here. I was aiming to get um, the, the this stuff all set up, but I didn't complete it, mostly because I was doing this uh, fancy build, which, like I said, feedback, please. I would love to hear what you guys think about it, because I think it came out pretty cool. I'm really kind of digging, if I'm being totally honest about it, the, the look and feel of this thing. Uh, what did I use at the top here? Uh, dotted panel, that's what I used. Yeah, I'm digging this place. I think it looks really nice. I hope you guys think so as well. So for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. As always, take it easy.